Hi. So I am joined here by my colleague Bidi. Um, she's part of the SMR team and she's also been um, running the Dome here at SMR Congress. So tell us about what's been going on here today. Hi Neda. Yes, yeah, so we've had a really busy day of um, sort of tech experiences, VR experiences. We had the first growth hacking first crowdsourced um, tech school here. Um, we're just about to hear from Growth Tribe, which is a growth hacking company. Um, yeah, lots going on. We've got um, a block rocking beats, which is a VR ex tech experience where you can go in and make music and virtual reality. Yeah, so it's really buzzing. Like we've got a lot of people here today. It's really exciting. Fantastic. So, so far, so good. Um, and you have a couple of the people here with yeah. you yeah. that uh, we can talk to. Yeah, I'll bring in Ferdinand. Perfect. Hi Ferdinand, lovely to meet you. Um, could you tell us a, a little bit about who you are and what your company is all about? Yeah, so um, I'm Ferdinand Gutzen. I'm one of the lead speakers and growth hackers at Growth Tribe, the Growth Tribe Academy. We're Europe's first growth hacking academy, so basically we teach people the skills of the future. Um, how do you use data-driven experimental processes to scale your business and drive your marketing and growth strategies? So how does that work in practice? Like, is growth hacking is such a buzzy thing, and it's it sounds really kind of interesting and innovative. But but what puts you like, what makes you different from from all the other growth hackers out there? Yeah. So uh, we try to separate the myth from the fact. So there's a lot of buzzwordy stuff happening around growth hacking, but it is um, there is a proper process behind it, and it's matured a lot in recent years. So it started off with black hat techniques, click farms in China, and now we see people like the president of France winning an election using growth hacking. So um, there are more sophisticated processes behind it. Uh, we have a process for data-driven experimentation. So instead of running big implementation strategies, we test every assumption first through experiments, and then when the experiments work, we scale what works, and we kill what doesn't work and uh, that's the basis. That sounds really interesting. And what are you guys doing here today? What are you going to do with all the delegates? So I'm going to give a 20 minute power session here. I'm going to talk about what is the mindset of a growth hacker? How does this process actually work? And I'm going to maybe show a few little secrets and little hacks that people can use for usability testing and general strategies. And you guys are a startup, but not you, your company has been around for a few years. What kind of clients, like what, what is, you know, how does your business go about? So we've been doing this for about two years now. We started off as a consultancy, but we found that consultancy doesn't work. We go to companies, we implement stuff, and then we leave and they go back to their old ways. So that's why we do courses. We work with all kinds of companies from small startups to big corporates. We've worked with ING. We've trained over 400 people from ING alone. We've worked with KLM, Google, Booking.com, um, and all kinds of really cool startups. Uh, companies like Katawiki, Vanderbrun, Skula. There are a lot, there are a lot. It's already a really impressive portfolio. That's fantastic. I'm, I'm happy to hear, and I'm really excited to have you here with us. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a really successful hacking session and uh, help so. everybody, you know, grow their business and, and everything. So, thank you so much. Uh, thank, thank you, you for much. joining us. Thank you. Today. Thank you. And I think we need to move a little bit more because we have another very interesting startup here with us today. And I am walking over here. Hi. I'm going, hi, hi guys, all right, good so good afternoon. Tell us who you are and what your startup is all about. Sure. Go for it. Okay, I can go for it. We're a, <laughs> we're a not-for-profit startup based in, in Rotterdam in the Netherlands, and we offer free IT training for refugees and people from underprivileged backgrounds. And uh, Theodor actually just gave a short presentation about it. He's one of the co-founders and uh, started the, uh, the initiative a year and a half ago. And uh, Octavian is one of the uh, crucial people making, uh, sort of taking the story forward. Um, but uh, what we fundamentally believe is that uh, in every big city in the world, uh, there are the resources already to make world-class education tuition-free for those in need. Um, and we're helping create a platform for cities to build schools uh, out of putting resources together. Fantastic, and you operate um, on on a lot of in a lot of different countries on a, on a wider market, or? We started two years ago in the Netherlands. Our main campus is in Rotterdam, uh, but our big ambition in the next years is to scale in every big European city. And right now we have a working prototype that is sustainable from the value it creates in the world. Um, and we hope soon we will be on many markets. So what inspired you to start this? Why exactly the tech industry? How did this come about? Well, so I believe that if you give people the chance, they will surprise you. 
uh, if you give them the chance to work hard for something, uh, they will actually do great things no matter where they start in life. And so our continent had a huge problem that there are more than two million refugees who reached our shores in the past two, in the past two years. And these are people who want to start a new life on a continent that has a huge shortage uh, in the technology industry. Uh, we wanted to give a chance uh, to launch careers in an industry that desperately needs so much talent uh, to people who desperately need a new beginning. Right. And, and often these are very talented people that just don't have the opportunities we benefit from here. You know, perhaps they were already studying and their studies were interrupted when war broke out. They, they have, have, have had to face difficult situations, but uh, yeah, they're more than eager to work on, uh, on it and uh, start a new life. So, um, do you have any success stories? Like, can you tell us of any of any interesting examples of, of sure, this absolutely. actually working? Yeah. Sure, sure. Actually, we've just published a short brochure with impact stories. We've had people that have gone to to have uh, after, just after a three-month bootcamp, they've gone to have paid internships. Uh, some people have gotten full-time jobs. A lot of people have enrolled in uh, education. They're pursuing an academic uh, path in IT now. So, these, these are the stories. Sounds great. Anything for you? Uh, well, to, to just uh, add a number over that, but Octavian already beautifully presented it. Uh, indeed, over 70% of the students uh, who graduated from the program go into success stories. So they either follow uh, higher level education, so university level in computer science, or are in paid internship or job positions in the Dutch uh, job market, which we think is incredible, uh, and the platform on which we're trying to improve right now. And we have, a, we have a large online audience. Is there something that anybody watching can do to help? How can we support this initiative? At Restart Network is really about building people together. We uh, work with uh, over 50 volunteers every three months to create a world-class program available for free. So if there are people uh, watching us right now who have uh, tech skills, are software developers, and they want to give back, we need a lot of help there. Companies that want to hire our students, uh, we are uh, putting really resources together to make it happen. So uh, if they have something to give, uh, let's uh, make it work together. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. It was Thank such you. a pleasure to talk to you. Such an inspiring initiative. I really, I feel really excited and I really hope that you being here helps a little bit and they also our online audience people actually reach out and, and give some support. And uh, yeah, thank you very much Thank and very enjoy much. and Thank good you. luck for the rest of the day. And yeah, of course. And uh, we'll see you around for sure.